Hello everyone, this is Alex Ipatov and this is the video number 11 of the series on Rook Endgames. In this video I'm going to talk about the Chiron positions number 2, 3 and 4. Right now you can see the Chiron position number 2 in your screens. The Chiron position number 2 is when the defending side king is cut off on more than one file. So in this example, Black's king is cut off on two files, the E file and F file. We remember from the previous video that if the king is cut off only on one file and if the defending side meets two requirements, the first one is the rook that creates a frontal attack against the pawn, and the second requirement is to keep the king on f5 and f6 squares if the king is cut off only on one file. But if the king is cut off on more than one file, like in this example, then the position is lost. So let's see the winning method here. White plays king c4, threatening d5. Black tries to apply the same method as in the case when the king is cut off only on one file, but there is a small difference that we are going to see now. So king b5, rook d8. The rook comes back to attack the pawn. White protects the pawn and threatens d5. Black doesn't have time to do anything else, just to check. Rook c8 check, king b6, renewing the threat of d5. Now black cannot play rook b8 because of king c7, rook b5, king c6, attacking the rook and supporting d45 for the next move. So after king b6 black has to go to d8. And here white wins by playing rook d1. And now we see the difference why it's lost when the opponent's king is cut off on two files. If the opponent's king were on f5 or f6, then it would be an easy draw. The king could have gone to a6 or to e4. But with the king on g5, it's not possible. The king cannot reach the e-file. So only king f6 is possible. But then white wins by attacking the rook, throwing it away from its ideal square on d8. Rook d5, king c6. Rook a5. And an important move, rook e1. And white cuts off the king on one file. But the difference is that the black's rook is misplaced on a5. If it were on d8, then it would be a different story, but with rook on a5, the position is lost because black cannot prevent d4, d5 from happening. So if rook a6 check, then we play king b5. We see that the rook is short, so it cannot make any more checks. Rook d6, king c5, rook d8, d5, and white wins. As soon as white pushes his pawn to d5, the position is won. So that was the short position number two. Please remember that if the king of the defending side is cut off on more than one file, two files in this example, it's usually lost because white implements the following idea, brings the king closer to the black rook, and when the pawn is attacked by the black rook, the pawn is being defended by the white rook, and the black king is not in time to reach the e file. When it goes to f6, we use the moment and we attack the black rook. The king cannot protect it because of rook e1 check, so the rook has to go from its ideal place and then white wins by once again attacking the rook and cutting off the black king by one file. And this position is won because the black's rook is misplaced and d45 is unstoppable. Now let's take a look at Sharon position number three. The method that was applied in the previous example does not work here. The winning idea is to create checkmate threats to the black king that is pressed to the edge of the board. His current position to h5 is optimally suited for defense. So, but first let's try to understand why the winning method in previous position does not work here. Because the black king is also cut off on two files, so why we cannot win this way? Let's take a look. What happens after move king d4? If white tries to use the same method as in the previous example, then black makes a draw by Playing rook d8 check, king c5, rook e8, king d5, rook d8 check, king c6, rook e8. Exactly the same. So white plays rook e1, king g6. So we're taking a look at the same line as in the previous example, with that difference that the position is shifted one file to the right. So now the pawn is on e4, and the black king is on g6, not f6. So white plays king d7, and now black plays rook a8, not rook e5, rook a8. However, rook a5 also could have been possible, king d6 and rook a5, but 
Let's play Rook A8. It's slightly better because it's easier to understand. So the drawing method here is to keep the rook on the long side and the king on the short side. In the previous example, it was not possible because the white pawn was on D4, on D file, and the black's rook was on A file. There was too little space between the black rook and the white king. However, it's not the case in this example. In this example, the black rook is on the long side, and it's a draw. For example, if white pushes E5, then the black rook starts checking, and we see that the white king has been thrown away from the pawn, and the pawn is vulnerable now. So we just saw why the method that was working in the previous example does not work here, because in this position black can establish the long side short side principle, so the rook belongs to the long side and king to the short side. But still, this position is winning, and white wins by implementing the tsuk one. So remember about this position. Then when the opponent's king is cut off on two files and is on the edge of the board. We win by combining threats, the first mating threat and the threat of pushing our pawn forward. So by pushing e5 and mating threat, let's say king e4, king e5 and rook h1 mates. So we combine two threats and black is not able to defend. But first we have to understand that the black king is perfectly placed on h5. And first we need to kick it off from there. So we play rook g2. We lose the tempi. Also, the black rook is perfectly placed on e8 because it's as far away as possible from the white king. So by playing rook g2, we force black to move one of his pieces from their ideal squares. If rook a8, then e5 wins. Rook a4, e6. Rook a6, king f4. And we see the critical idea of this uh, Chiron position number three that white combined threats of pushing the pawn and creating the mating threat. So that's why rook e8 was not possible, because it enabled white to play e5. Let's see what happens in case of black's best defense, king h4. So white plays rook g7. e5 does not work here just yet, because the white rook is too short. Rook takes e5, king e4 does not work due to king h3 and the white rook is attacked. It would have worked with the rook on g1 though. So after king h4, white plays rook g7, king h5, and the rook comes back to g1, losing the tempi by playing rook g2, rook g7, rook g1. Now one of black pieces has to go from their ideal squares, either rook from e8, which is ideally placed there, or the king from h5. So it has to go either to h4 or to h6. So let's take a look at all possibilities. We will check rook e8. In case of the black rook moves, we will check king h6 and king h4. In case of king h4, now e5 wins, because black cannot take on e5 due to king f4, and there is double attack on the rook, and rook h1 is a mate threat. The white rook is long enough. If black plays rook e8, then we use this moment to push our pawn forward. Black tries to cut off our king along the first rank, but we implement the critical idea of the Chiron position number 3. We combine threats of advancing our e-pawn and the mating threat. So King h6, e7, rook e8, king f4, rook e8, king f5, and white wins because of the double attack. So rook e8 is not possible either. Now let's check what happens in case of a king h6. After king h6, we play king d4. We want to play e5, so black has to check. We play king c5, black goes back to e8. We play king d5. By each move we create the threat of e5, so black doesn't have any time to do something else, so black makes one more check, we play king e6, once again we threaten e5, so one more check, and now we play king f6, creating the double attack to push the e pawn to e5 and the mating threat. This position is now easily winning. So let's summarize this example. This was the short position number 2. The black's king was cut off on two files, it was on the edge of the board, and in order to win we combined threats of advancing our e-pawn and the mating threat. The winning method that we saw in the previous example, with the black king cut off on two files, but not on the edge of the board, does not work here, because the black rook is on the long side. Now let's take a look at our final example. 
when the opponent king is cut off on two files, but we deal with b or g pawns. Please remember that if the side with the extra pawn has b or g pawn and the opponent's king is cut off only on two files, it's usually not enough to win. The defending side needs to meet two requirements, two criteria. First, the rook has to attack the opponent's pawn from the front as far as possible from the pawn, like in this case, from b8, and the king should stay on squares e5 and e6. So, in this position, black meets all the requirements, so this is a draw. So if white plays king a4, with the idea b5, then black plays rook a check, and we see that the white king lacks one more file to go to the left. That's why it's a draw with b and g pawns, because the white king, or the black king, if the black has the extra pawn, cannot go to the edge of the board. King b5, rook b8 check, king a5, rook a8 check, and once again, the king cannot go to the left, so it has to go to b, but now rook b8 check, and the white king has to eventually come back to b3 because of checks. King c5, rook c8, king b5, b8, and so on. So king f4 does not work. Let's take a look at what happens after rook d4. The idea of rook d4 is to play king a4. For example, black plays something like this. Then it's justified because our pawn is protected by the rook. But after rook d4, black has king e5. That's why it's important to keep the king on squares e5 and e6 in order to be able to attack the rook right when it comes to d4. So king e5. If white plays rook d7, then king e6. Once again, harassing the rook. If rook e7, then the king comes closer, and this is an easy draw. King e4, king c6. If after king e5, white plays king c3, then black can make draw in different ways. Rook h8. If white plays b5, then rook b8. We use tactical motives. White cannot go to c4 because of rook takes b5. And in case of king b5, king takes d4 and we have a draw. And if black plays rook b8, white plays rook h4. Black just comes closer to the pawn and also a draw because we know that the passive defense saves the day for defending side against b and g pawns. So... If white plays rook d4, then king e5, king c3, rook h8. We have already seen that b5 does not work. So let's see what happens after rook d7 then. Once again, black just harasses the white rook and keeps on waiting. And white cannot improve his position. Either the rook will give up the d file for the black king, let's say rook a7, then king d5 is possible, or king d6, and the black king is too close. Either it will go back to its initial square, but then the black rook will keep on checking and would eventually come back to b8. And white has no plan to improve his position. That was the video on the Chiron positions number 2, 3 and 4. That was Alexey Patov, and thank you for watching.